Hey, what's up you guys? It's Caboose bringing you another Spider-Man PC video. And today what I got for you guys here is some news that I know a lot of people have been waiting for. I got some info for you guys on minimum PC requirements, as well as some of the things that are coming to play with Spider-Man on PC and pre-orders are live. We're gonna jump into all this in a moment, but before we do so, if you're looking forward to Spider-Man dropping on the PC, if you cannot wait to jump in and see it in all its glory, like I can't wait, well then scroll down right now, hit that thumbs up button, share your excitement with me. And with that being said, let's jump into this. Mike Fitzgerald, who's the core technology director at Insomniac Games, put out a blog post on the PlayStation blog that details a ton of information about Spider-Man PC and what we can expect on August 12th. Here's what they had to say in the blog post. First off, let's touch on the graphics features newly available in the PC version of Marvel Spider-Man Remastered. Our goal was to make this game a visual stunner on the PC platform, and that meant opening up extensive configurability to PC users with varying hardware, as well as introducing some new techniques and tools to push things even further. To provide an abbreviated list, and now let's talk about what you can expect in terms of those graphical improvements, you're gonna get ray traced reflections that are available across the game for those with hardware that supports them. Reflections also have varied quality levels, one of which is a new higher quality ray trace mode that offers even more city detail when web swinging and fighting crime in Marvel's New York. You're also gonna get Nvidia DLSS, deep learning super sampling, increases graphics performance using dedicated Tensor Core AI processors found only on GeForce RTX GPUs boosting frame rates with uncompromised image quality, which means you're gonna pretty much have an uncapped frame rate, which is insane. You're also gonna get NVIDIA DLAA, which is Deep Learning Anti-Aliasing, is an AI-based anti-aliasing mode for GeForce RTX gamers who have some spare GPU headroom and want higher levels of image quality. And beyond choosing output resolutions, we also wanna support a wide range of display ratios, including ultra-wide 21 by nine, panoramic 32 by nine and Nvidia surround multi-monitor setups. If you got three monitors, we've got the game for you to show them off with. And yes, I have three monitors. I'm gonna try to make this work, but either way, I am so excited to see how this game is gonna look on PC with all of these features listed. And then finally, it says here, many other rendering systems are more customizable than they have been in the past with additional quality levels and algorithmic options. These include SSAO, texture filtering, LOD quality, shadows, and more. We support windowed, full screen, and exclusive full screen rendering modes. And this is another piece from the blog post that I thought was very exciting for people out there that don't have PS5s, but want to experience haptic feedback and what it feels like when you're playing with that PS5 controller. It mentions the blog post, in addition to PC graphical features, there are multiple peripherals and customization options with PlayStation DualSense wireless controller support. PC players will get to experience adaptive trigger feedback an amazing haptic response while battling iconic Marvel villains. Mouse and keyboard support during gameplay and throughout the game's UI provide a completely different customizable control option for those who prefer it. With Steam input support, there are innumerable remapping options available, and the game will also offer multiple accessibility features. Marvel Spider-Man Remastered will also support achievements and cloud saves on both Steam and the Epic Game Store. And if you wanna see all of this in action, if you wanna get just a glimpse, a nice little taste of Spider-Man on the PC, well, they released a brand new trailer for it, so check this out. The city is in danger. It needs our help. All of our help. All right, well, call the play, coach. Hello, New York! Come through. anymore. You're lucky you found actual cash. I don't know if I can beat him. Maybe you can't. Maybe Spider-Man needs help. Huh. Guess I gotta play harder to get. I don't feel like a failure. I feel like me. 
Get more backup. And lock down the airspace. You have to learn to swallow that Parker pride and accept that you're human, like the rest of us. Hey, Yuri. I caught the bad guys, but... But what? You might want to bring a ladder. And now the question that, again, a ton of people have been asking me, they're saying, hey, Caboose, what's the minimum system requirements? I know a lot of people out there aren't gonna have the most high-end PCs. Some people out there might even just have kind of a gaming laptop. Well, they've put out a little graphic for you to check out in this PlayStation blog that give you an idea as to what the minimum requirements are for your PC, as well as what the ultimate requirements can be to get this game running at its peak performance. So here's the graph. You can see now on the minimum side at 720p and 30 FPS with very low graphic presets, you'll need an Nvidia a GeForce GTX 950 or AMD equivalent, an Intel Core i3 to 4160 or AMD equivalent, at least eight gigs of RAM and a storage of 75 gigs on your hard drive. And then as for the recommended settings, well, you can see there, if you wanna run the game at a smooth 1080p 60 FPS with medium graphic presets, you're gonna need an Nvidia GeForce GTX 1060 or AMD Radeon RX 580, an Intel Core i5 to 4670 or AMD Ryzen 5 1600, 16 gigs of RAM and 75 gigs on an SSD. That's right. If you have this game installed on an SSD, it's going to load faster. It's going to run faster. Everything's going to be running a lot better instead of a hard drive. And now if you want to run this game at its ultimate settings, the best that it could possibly look, the ultimate ray tracing mode, 4K 60 FPS, high ray tracing at very high, you're gonna need an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 or AMD Radeon RX 6950 XT, Intel Core i7 or AMD Ryzen 9, 32 gigs of RAM, and again, that's 75 gig minimum on your SSD. That's the download size for Spider-Man on PC, and they're recommending that you put it on an SSD, again, for the faster loading time and for the better performance overall. You can pause or go back and just take a look at that chart in general and see if you have any bits of the parts that are listed in any of those recommended settings, and hopefully, you'll be able to run Spider-Man on PC on the rigs that you have at home, or if you have a laptop that potentially has some of the things that are listed there well maybe it'll work there too and then finally spider-man pc is available for pre-order on steam and as well the epic game store it's mentioned here in the blog post now that you know what you're getting with our new pc version of marvel spider-man remastered you're surely counting down the days to its august 12th release absolutely luckily i'm excited to announce that we're also offering a pre-purchase item pack if you pre-purchase ahead of the game's launch, you'll get early unlock to these Spider-Man suits, which is the tech-heavy Iron Spider suit from Avengers Infinity War, the one-of-a-kind Spider-Punk suit, and the originally designed by Insomniac Games Velocity suit. You're also going to get an early unlock of the Spider-Drone combat gadget and five extra skill points to spend on Spidey upgrades. This is pretty much the exact same pre-order bonus that they had available for Spider-Man PS4 when the game was first launching on the PlayStation 4 all the way back back in 2018 so not much has changed here and this is just now going to be available for pc owners the only sad bit of news here although it comes with a caveat is that it looks like considering we have a blog post now for spider-man on pc we've gotten to see some new screenshots and all that fun stuff for the game i don't think we're gonna get that andrew garfield amazing spider-man 2 suit or the suit from the end of Spider-Man No Way Home. Again, the caveat being that people are working on mods already for Spider-Man on PC, and hopefully we're gonna get some pretty sweet looking ones when the game launches in August. I'll be sure to cover it, and I'll be sure to credit all the people who are working hard and creating these awesome looking mods for Spider-Man on PC. I can't wait for this game to launch either way, just to see how good it's gonna look, just to free roam around at kind of an uncapped FPS to see these high ray tracing and everything. I got a 3070 in my rig, so I can't run it at the very max of its capability, but I can run this game looking damn good. And I also wanna try out with my three monitors that ultra wide setting and see how that'll end up looking. I'm very excited for this game to launch. I'm really hyped to try it out. I can't wait to play it. And I hope you guys are too if you have some PCs at home or if you don't have a PlayStation and you've been waiting to play this incredible Spider-Man game from Insomniac. And with all that being said, now I wanna kick it to you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Out of all the news that I presented you here today, what's got you the most excited? 
Sound off with your thoughts in the comments. And of course, if you enjoyed today's video, if I'm keeping you up to date on everything with Spider-Man on PC, scroll down, hit that thumbs up button. It would show your support and I would really appreciate it. I'm Caboose and you can click on screen to make your way to one of the other videos on the channel or you can click my logo to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Those links are going to be in the description. Drop a like if you enjoyed, leave a comment if you have an opinion and subscribe if you're new. See you guys later.